Molly Crew, kickstart my heart. Over the months, I've had several, several subscribers request this one. Two of them are Kenneth Yaw and Cornelius One. I've actually jammed this one with Mick. Um, I'll tell you a story about that in a few minutes here. But uh, Mick Mars' son, my best friend, last deal. And um, I remember being at Mick's house jamming this. You want to tune flat? You ready? Let's rock. All right. flat for this right but really quick I always say this on every Motley lesson uh, back in I'd say 84 um, I became friends with Mick Mars son no it was 83 because it was right before the US festival and I met last nicest dude in the world man uh, we started our music dreams together a band called Antioch rags to riches and um, he's a guitar player but he is also a bass player a very solid bass player man good musician and um, his dad is Mick Mars. So uh, over the years, you know, Mick came out to one of our shows back around 87 or 88 when we played in Hollywood. Um, he didn't get to, well, he actually did get to check us out, but, you know, he had his girls, girls, girls jacket on and was kind of getting swamped. You know, L.A., Hollywood, you know, the whole hometown of the crew. But, um, and I still have it on VHS tape to this day. But I've been to Mick's house, jammed with him, and uh, this is one of the songs me and him kind of jammed. Um, went to his house when he lived in Malibu with Les. And um, very super cool guy, man. Awesome dude. So uh, I, I remember uh, going into his house, man, and going through the front room. And he had, <laughs> he had this uh, couple big screen TVs. And when one would blow out, he would just leave it there, buy a new one, and stick it in front of the old one. That's one thing that stood out in my mind. And Les was like, yeah, man, that's what he does. He just leaves the old one, buys a new one, puts one in front of it. But he had this whole music room, you know, with tons of guitars in it, man. And we spent a lot of time in there jamming and actually started a, um, the beginning stages of a process where Mick was going to produce me and uh, we were going to get a drummer, the guy from Green Jelly, and uh, he wanted to get into producing bands. And this was the time uh, when Vince Neal, I don't think he was in the band at the time. He may have been, I can't remember. Um, but Mick was going to put his hand to producing and stuff, and then, uh, no, Mick wasn't, or Vince wasn't in the band because. What stopped that from happening was Vince rejoined and Motley just psh, skyrocketed back to the top again. So, um, but anyways, enough of that. Let's jump in to learning this song. Um, what you want to do is this is a really cool trip uh, trick here. You want to have your bar pressed down, maybe halfway. And take your first finger or middle finger or whatever, hit the D string, and it's going to be real wobbly. And slowly raise that whammy bar. It's like shifting gears, man. And then you kind of hit it again and then do that on the A string. And then again on the E string. That's a... Uh, 
uh, one track guitar that rings out as this part comes in. <laughs> So, um, live Mick does the oct or the power chord plus the octave in studio. It's the root five, so he's doing three E and five A. So you'll hit those two strings together, then move it a half step sharp up to four and six, and another half step up to five and seven, all on the E and A string. So, and then hit it again, and then palm mute those two strings three times. So. Hit the chord again, three more palm mutes. Chord again, three more palm mutes. So we have actually two palm mutes on that last one, okay? So three, three, and then two. And then you start it over. And the fourth one you go. Same thing, so it's four of the same, and then you go three and five EA, four and six EA, and then this part. Okay, so um, open A, second fret D, hit those two strings together. Then the open A, and then go 3A, pull off to open. Do it again. So. And then I open A again. So. I'm trying to remember which uh, form of the G chord, but here's what we're going to roll with. We'll do the 3E, muted A, and then 3B, 3E. I think that's the one. Hit all six, and then open A, 2A, pull off to open, 3A, pull off to open, 4A, pull off to open. Or no, don't pull that one off. So. So. And then go like this. And this is a D to a D suspended, and Mick did this combination a lot. 5A, and then 7 barred with your third finger on the D, G, and B, and then pinky on 8B. And you'll go, hit like strings 5, 4, and 3, palm in the A string once, and then add that pinky to the 8B, and then hit strings 4, 3, and 2. So, so. mute the A string again and then lift the pinky off to where you're doing 777 D, G, D, G, and B. So, and then two palm mutes off the A string. And then repeat it. But cut off the two palm mutes on the fifth fret A for the second one. So. And then um, open E. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I screwed up, and I've jammed this with him. I kid you not. They'll do... Uh, let me back up to this D chord. So you have, after you do the suspended, then you palm mute the 5th fret A four times. I think it's four times, it might even be more. Five times. There, okay. You do suspended back to the major chord. Open E, 3rd fret E, and then start it over. And then this one go, open A, 3A, pull off to open. 
three A pull off open again, and then three A, and then back to this D suspended part. Go through the suspended, back to the major, so. And then hit the, the D major chord again, and then he does a different filler riff here. And that's open E, and then this chromatic run. Chromatic just means a half step at a time, or one fret at a time. Two, three, four, five. F sharp, G, G sharp, A. And then three, A. And then you're starting it over. Let me play this whole little part. You'll go through it to the G and then go open A. You did this one earlier. 2A, pull to open. 3A, pull to open. 4A, and then a D major chord. That's 5A, 777, DGB. And then he goes into this part. This is where the vocals come in. So, 3E, 5A, 4E, 6A, 5E, 7A, <laughs> 12 times palm muted. Mind you, 13. Yeah. Two times and then you'll go back to start it over to the G power chord, to the G sharp power chord, and then we're going to change. And on that part you'll go 3A, 5D, and if you catch the 5G, actually with any of these, it's the power chord plus the octave, it's fine, it just makes it a little bit fuller. And then move that up a string each to a G power chord. So we'll have, let's play that part. Um, this part we did earlier, the whole D suspended part. 5A, 777D, G, and B. Where we had the four palm muted fifth fret A's in there. So you'll run through the suspended with the, with the four palm muted A's and suspended back to the major chord. And then you repeat it all. Counting. Because <laughs> it might be 11 times. It's 11 times when you run through this, guys. Man, I'm just screwing it up for someone that, that jammed it, huh? I would count it. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three how I would count it in my head. Ultimately you won't have to count it. Sometimes teaching screws you up because you're forced to analyze that which you don't normally have to analyze that comes natural. But, you know I gotta break it down for you and I've confused the hell out of you now. Okay and then we go into the into the C. D suspended thing. And then that runs through twice, right? Then we go to the G power chord to the G sharp. And then we have this chord. Open A, five, five, or open A, seven D, six G, and then eight on the B and E.